Tuesday, April 25th, to have some fun mulching and cleaning up. A lot of great announcements, a lot of wonderful things happening after Easter here at Salem. And certainly, we are going to celebrate our risen Christ once again this day. My friends, Christ is risen. He is risen.
today is Isaiah chapter 25, verses 6 through 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the covering that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, See, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord.
ground up flood shouting, the earth is going to swallow us too. Not the most happy verse to read this morning, but uh, it is about being swallowed, about being gone, as an example of God's judgment. The people were swallowed up, and they were no more. Another example of being swallowed up comes from the time of Jonah. Uh, Jonah is called by God to go preach to the great city of Nineveh. He gets on the uh, fastest boat of travel of the day, a boat, and he heads in the opposite direction, as fast as he can go. They come upon just a unnatural, terrible storm, and the sailors are like, what's up with this? And the, the boat's being tore apart, and we see that Jonah says, it's because of me, throw me overboard. So the sailors throw him overboard, and the seas calm down. But instead of drowning, we read, now the Lord provided a huge fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of a fish three days and three nights. Here, it's being swallowed as an example of God's protection. Now, I can share other stories with you of things being swallowed up in Scripture. Uh, I showed you an example of the displaying God's power, an example of um, how it's a sign of judgment, but also how God provided safety for Jonah being swallowed in the belly of this great fish. But mostly, when we look at things being swallowed up, it is more in the vein of judgment. Is more in the vein of this is terrible. This is more in the vein of these things are swallowed up and they're gone forever. Part two of my sermon now. Uh, part two, talk a little bit about death and how death rules and how death reigns and how death is one challenge. And death goes around swallowing up so many things, swallowing up people this day. And we as people have tried all sorts of things to avoid death, to trick death, to get out of the way of the great black hole of death that goes around sucking so much down. Uh, we try all sorts of pills, we try exercise, we try to eat yucky foods, we try all sorts of things to avoid death. Uh, it's interesting uh, reading in the Farmer's Almanac things of days of old that you would do to avoid death. And I just picked out five of them to share. Never store your shoes above your head. I don't know how heavy your shoes are, but I guess that could be the cause of death. I never measure your own height. I don't know. Uh, you mustn't allow a candle to burn itself out. Sleeping with your head at the foot of the bed is surely fatal. I know the almanac says it. I uh, never rub soap when your skin on Friday. I think my son likes that one. I don't know. <laughs> but there's like 120 of these. You can go online and find them. Uh, it's pretty funny, but deadly serious because in the Farmer's Almanac, these were the ways people for many years have decided we can avoid death by doing or not doing these things. We've been trying to avoid death, but death is one match, one challenge that has been swallowing people down for ages. I read a story of a man who was uh, sitting down to eat some lunch, and death came by. And death said, I'm sorry, but you're first on my list. And the man said, well, just give me a few more moments. I have this wonderful meal prepared. Death, why don't you sit down and we can eat together? Well, death agreed. Well, let's have lunch together. Death was sort of hungry, so they sat down and they ate lunch. And the death then stood up and said, all right, it's now your time. And the man said, well, hold on, we haven't had dessert yet. And Death said, you know, I like you. Um, I'll give you a few more moments here. But let's have dessert together. So the man pulled out coconut cream pie and a nice pot of coffee. And when Death wasn't looking, he reached in Death's bag, erased his name at the top of the list, erased the name at the bottom of the list, put his name at the bottom and the other name at the top, snuck it back into Death's bag, Finished having pie together and coffee, and Beth said, I really appreciate your hospitality so much today, and I'm going to do something that I've never done before. Today I'm going to start at the bottom of my list. <laughs> you can't trick death. You can't cheat death. Death swallows us up. And death seems so unnatural, because death isn't natural for this world. Paul writes in Romans 5.12, when Adam sinned, Sin entered the world. Adam's sin brought death, so death spread to everyone, for everyone sinned. The death spread. Death got big 
black hole sucking everything down. It's formed to this world it came through sin, but death has remained unchallenged, has remained the champion so strong. Part three now of the sermon and the good news. We read the book of Isaiah, these wonderful words, Isaiah 20, 25, looking forward to the day God will swallow up death forever. And then these beautiful words I want to focus on, 1 Corinthians 15, even death will be swallowed up in victory. Jesus swallowed up death in victory. That's what we celebrate at Easter, the great swallower of death who ruled as a champion for years, not only met its match, but met its master. And Jesus, through overcoming death, swallowed up death in victory. I want to share another story with you that uh, hopefully will help uh, bring some understanding to this, what it means for Jesus to swallow up death in victory. And it's a true story from uh, the pen of Pastor Stephen Gaines. Uh, Stephen Gaines writes about uh, visiting uh, his friend Jim in the hospital. And uh, where's Jim at this morning? Jim, there's Jim, I'm sorry. This was the name that was in Pastor uh, Steve's story. So his name's Jim, nothing to do with you, Jim. <laughs> so uh, Jim was in the hospital. And he was dying of cancer. And it was one of Steve's really good friends. So Steve went to the hospital and pulled a chair up beside his friend and was just you know, horrified because Jim had lost so much weight and he was pale. And he held his friend's hand and said, what can I pray for you this day? And his friend said, Jim, you know, um, his friend Jim said, it's Pastor Steve. Uh, you know, I, I know I'm safe, I know I'm going to heaven when I die, but I've never died before, and it's pretty scary. Can you say something or pray in such a way to take the fear of death away from me? Well, Pastor Gaines thought about it for a little bit, and he shared a story with Jim from his childhood. Apparently, little Steve, uh, before he was all grown up as Pastor Gaines, was really scared of the dark in his house. And so his mother had uh, lights on and little candles all over the place just to dispel the darkness because little Stevie was so scared of the dark. Now whenever the family would go away and come back at night, all the lights were out in the house. And this was terrifying to little Stevie. So his dad would open the door and walk into the darkness and disappear. He'd be gone. The darkness would overwhelm his dad, and little Stevie couldn't see his dad anymore. But in due time, his dad would flip on the light and then say, Little Stevie, the darkness is gone. It's okay now. You can come into the house. And little Stevie would joyfully come into the house. Pastor Gaines told that story to his friend, Jim, and told his friend, Jim, that you know, Jesus died on the cross for sins. And death swallowed Jesus. Jesus was in the darkness of death for three days. But then, he flipped on the light. Jesus rose from the dead and said to us all, it's okay now to come on in because Jesus' victory swallowed up death. I love that little story because it really helps us grab a hold at least me, the understanding death being swallowed up in the victory of Jesus. For when it seemed that death had won, that the darkness of death had swallowed up Jesus and Jesus was gone, nothing had come back truly from death before, but now Jesus conquered sin, death, and the grave and rose victorious and now Jesus swallowed up death in his victory and made a way through him we would be with God what a beautiful story, what a beautiful Savior, what a beautiful celebration we have at Easter time. Christ is risen so that he has turned on that light in the darkness and said, it's okay to come in through Christ's victory. Death has been swallowed up. My friends, Christ is risen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for your awesome and mighty power. 
Lord, death is so powerful and it reigned on max for so many generations. But you, Lord Jesus, are stronger than death. And even after three days in the darkness, you turn on the light of the resurrection and rose victorious. <coughs> we are so thankful for your great love for us, your great power over death, and the victory that you have won, swallowing up death forever. Lord Jesus, thank you for making a way through you that we can live forever in eternity with you. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for the resurrection. We are your people. Encourage us now to go out and share the good news of the resurrection with all, that you have swallowed up death forever. Amen. Our next song of faith is one of my favorite ones. Uh, please stand and join together in this wonderful song of faith.
give us the strength to love more. Because we are accepted by you as we are. Give us the grace to accept others without judgment or prejudice. In this moment, Lord, we are thankful. Thankful that we can pray together in your name. We pray knowing that you are greater than anything we may be facing. Our world and places near and far are darkened and troubled. Lead us, your people of hope, with your shining light. Receive all the prayers of our hearts, Lord, in this moment. As especially we lift up to you those that we have named. And we lift up to you those prayers that are deep within our hearts. Send the breath of your Holy Spirit that as we walk along with you, Lord, we too may find your peace that passes all understanding as you lead us in your will and your way. As we remember to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we are the children of a giving God, we do, as a response in God's love, we give. Let us now receive our tithes and our
And whenever we hired her to play the piano for a worship service, said, I want to be playing the organ by Easter time. Learn how to play the organ by Easter time. Really? And what's well, the Sunday after Easter? She played the organ for Easter and after Easter and leading up to it. It was not in her job description at all to learn how to play the organ. But here she is. Look what she's done. Can we thank God for Pam today? Thank you. Let us continue to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, whose victory swallowed up death.